is Gina, Janice Psyche PRN. Um, if you reach me today uh, on my channel and your first time, thank you so much. If you're a returning listener, thank you as well for supporting me and support the work to move mental health forward. This is a channel where I focus on mental health education and self-improvement videos. And lately I'm focusing a lot more on talking about trauma um, within families, within work relationships, within friendships. So all types of facets where we can potentially look at um, how trauma can present symptoms and preventions. So today I'm gonna focus on clutter, and how it relates to history of trauma. Um, so doing my research before this video, there are studies, I'm gonna write off my notes. There were studies that show that there's a high rate of anxiety, depression, and ADHD presentation with people who have the tendency to have a lot of clutter in, in their immediate environments. Now, um, some people say uh, the anxiety, the depression, and maybe the ADHD is a cause of the clutter, right? So if you're suffering from anxiety, you're suffering from depression, and you really don't have the motivation or the energy, right? You don't have the capacity or the energy or the power to be able to clean up your immediate surrounding. And um, yes, that could be true. That could be a factor in that. But many people who suffer anxiety, depression, even sometimes a lot of ADHD presentation. I did a lot of research um, working with kiddos, especially in the foster, um, uh, you know, foster children kids in um, DCF care, um, that, that population, and many of them have presentation of inattentiveness, um, dysregulation, um, as well as, you know, just being revved up a lot. No, I'm trying to find the word for it when it's coming up. But um, so there's a, a huge link there's a huge percentage linkage of um, ADHD presentation with people with history of chronic trauma. So chronic trauma being CPTSD. So there's big T trauma and small T trauma. Um, so focus a lot on, you know, CPTSD, which is small T trauma, you know, which is, you know, we, we always talk about trauma being from you know, people who go to you know military or have had had really, you know, what we can determine immediately as traumatic traumatizing incident, you know, or like witnessing gun violence or seeing somebody, a friend or a family member member being shot, being robbed, getting into a really bad car accident. Um, you know, your house catching on fire right in front of your eye, losing everything. Um, being a victim of, you know, um, environmental situations such as flooding, house getting swept away, losing a family member suddenly into a heart attack, you know, so things like that. But then there's trauma that's chronic as well, such as in emotional abuse versus verbal abuse, um, neglect, um, sexual abuse can either way, if it's a violent attack, a rape, you know, can be t t big T trauma or can be, you know, subtle, touching, inappropriate talk, inappropriate conversation, in, not age appropriate. So I'm just going off a tangent a little bit, explaining different type of trauma. But those kind of trauma can also lead people, especially people who have had childhood experience with small T trauma, so trauma that you're exposed to in small bits, what we call small bits, but over a long period of time. Um, so those people with small T trauma also experience sim symptomology as people who might have big T trauma, such as a war veteran. Um, so, so people can, you know, people can have trouble with maintaining the environment. It's a way to really try to um, 
feel safe, as it gives them a sense of safety, but then also can lead to isolation because if your environment is cluttered, you know, you have a lot of cluttered different things. I used to watch a show on TLC um, called um, something, uh, Hoarders, Hoarders, yes, Hoarders. And that, even when they, you know, they tell the stories of the people who are hoarding, you know, so hoarding is a type of, you know, collection, clutter. Um, and they tell the story of the people who are engaging in those behaviors is always reflect some type of a traumatic incident that happened to them. So for, for, for you to be here today listening to this, you most likely has platter, can figure it out, can know why you're isolating because you have platter in your environment, or you know someone who has platter or hoarding and concern about the, the, the person. So there are times where like, let's say for example, somebody has platter, maybe a car, so a car or cars. I've had clients who've been cited by their towns for having a bunch of cars, junk cars in their yard and their neighbors get really, you know, annoyed or concerned, especially of the kids and kids in the, in the home. Um, tires, collection of tires or parts of cars, you know, in the yard and about overflows to the garage, the basement, things like that. People collect clutter in different environments. So especially like, for example, a car, you know, so there are some people who might look fly, fabulous, you know, like someone like me who grew up a lot in the church, show up in church, look in all the parts, but you go into their car and it tells you a different story. The car is messy, 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 might even be stinky. And the thing is, let's say, you know, you have somebody who has that presentation and let's say you are my friend. I say, hey, your car is a little messy, right? You say that and, and they don't seem to be able to have the ability to clean it or keep it clean. That's what the concern is. You know, every now and then if you have kids, I've been there with my car, sometimes you kind of don't have time. You didn't get time to go to the car wash, a different story, right? The right? collection of this over time. But making a point to prioritize those is so, so important, even as a parent, even as a single parent or whatever your situation might be. So car, refrigerator is another huge area. I have a lot of people who, you know, might have food, collecting their fridge, expired food, just sitting there and never cleaned out, been there for months, moldy bread. Maybe yogurt, spired, all kinds of things. It's just sticky, sticky from like maybe, you know, um, juice spilling in there, all kinds of things like that. Little bit here and there, hey, you know, just the same thing. Like I talk about the car, you know, dusty, sticky, whatever. But when it gets to the point where it's just like, whoa, you open the fridge, it's like, ooh, the smell that hates you. That's a concern. Laundry is another one. There are people who have laundry literally on the floors in their bedrooms. Sometimes even laundry right to the living room on the couch, towels, wet towels, just what you can say messy. Dining table collections of bowls not cleaned up, sinks collecting of used plates and bowls that are not washed for days, moldy, smelly, just doesn't have the energy to go to it and clean it up. Garbage overflowing, smelly. Yeah, I mean, like me, I have a big garbage that gets taken out once a week. But every now and then, you know, depending on culture, if I have rice and beans or whatever, and I throw the beans in there, and it's no garbage day, it's been two days, or I threw something in there, that's me cleaning out the freezer. Yes, we can make it smelly but this is like talking about just garbage collecting inside the home as well just not emptied or just emptied tied up staying there right there in the kitchen just messy things like that laundry not done collecting piled up in the room under the room under the bed just ooh, some people just shove it under the bed too just to out of sight kind of thing but they're collecting dust not gonna go on and on i'm just doing different examples and the other one that really is big especially with ADHD presentations office spaces have you ever worked with someone that their office space or their 
um, desk area, it just cluttered with piles and piles of files and paper. Like you wonder, how do you function? Though some people might say, oh, I function better when I'm in clutter. That shows I'm productive. No, I don't think so. You know, it takes a lot of mental energy. Um, research has also shown that when you have really laid out minimalist, clean working area, it helps with regulation, with regulation, it helps with less um, um forgetfulness so to speak because everything is aligned not to be perfect and like you know I know some people were like like everything is labeled yeah if you're you're that type great but if not it's like oh just clean it out a little bit you know what I mean but I'll get to that now that could be a sign of chaos in the head now, there are different types of clutter. So I just talked to one about environmental clutter. There could be clutter also in the head. My next video actually is going to focus on that, um, like the clutter in our head. Sometimes I've been an example of it in work in progress, especially when you have history of trauma like myself, CPS, CPTSD, um, what we call ruminating or, you know, just having nostalgia a lot, like constantly thinking about old times. Yeah, you know, people get together, they'll talk about, oh, I went to high school, so, so, and so. It's like constantly having nostalgia and ruminating about different things, especially if you've been in different, different relationships that are toxic or difficult, difficult parents, child relationship, difficult you know, parent, mom, dad, uncle, grandma was very toxic. It can leave you ruminating a lot or a partner or even a boss. Friendships, cold friendships that became toxic can leave you ruminating or having nostalgia about the good times and not really focusing on the difficult times just so you can dissociate. It's a way to deal with trauma. So it's chaos, even emotional um, clutter, emotional clutter can be an example of that can be emotional clutter. So environmental clutter, emotional clutter. Third also can be relationship clutter, right? Where you're it's just an example, just a bunch of people around you all the time. You don't really have selective friendships, trusted friendships that can run, but you always have a bunch of friendships and you have difficulty maybe trusting who to rely on. That's all good and dandy. We want to develop good community around ourselves. But we, when you always have a bunch of quote unquote followers, you know, it's a different thing. Also, um, friendships that get into um, drama mode a lot, a lot of up and down fights, things like that can also be regarded as relationship clutter. Some people also do that as a way to maybe, you know, have a bunch of people where they're always nosing into other people's businesses, gossiping a lot, fishing information about them, about other people, through other people. So a lot of triangulation within different types of relationships like that. So that could be, you know, relationship clutter. Another clutter is time clutter, fourth one. That's it for, yeah, fourth one is um, what we call time clatter. So you're so booked, overbooked, <laughs> guilty sometimes for me, but really for me, and I talk about remedies for every each one of these clatters. So time clatter is where you're so booked and overbooked, you're working, but yet, um, you know, your calendar is booked with after work events, weekend, constantly going, 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 having something to do every day, every single second of the day. There's no time where you can relax and be by yourself. It almost feels, oh, I'm sorry, my pillow is sliding. <laughs> anyway, so it's a trauma response where people have fear or anxiety literally of sitting by themselves or, or being by themselves it triggers um fear or anxiety or rumination to can be uh or even panic in some people you know, when they're not comfortable to just be by themselves and have calmness to enjoy you know, their presence, like going out to like movies by them. So going out to a restaurant, 
things like that. So that can be uh, categorized as a time clutter where your calendar is always on the go, go, go. Can be good things. It's not always bad, like you're going da, 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 doing bad things, but good things. But when you're constantly in that sense of presentation, will be a trauma response um, where you're overbooked all the time and you can start becoming overwhelmed, overstretched, things like that. The other thing environmental that I didn't talk about is expired cans, you know, like canned goods, especially with the uh, pandemic that we had, you know, if you have people, you have people who are like collecting, go to the store and get all kinds of things just to have you feel safe because there was always on the news about, you know, I remember one time rice was even, I think I'm driving here and then we didn't have any rice because I, I just cannot stand having a bunch of food items, even if it's canned goods that will expire and just sitting in the cabinet. So if you want like over a year, you just have cans and cans of, of food in your pantry, you know, and you're just collecting and hoarding it, it will be a sign of um, trauma. Um, broken bikes, broken cars, I talked about old clothing, you know, this is, you know, a world of Amazon, click, 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 you know, just Amazon, all kinds of retail shops online, you can keep shopping and shopping and shopping, even shopping like that, constantly buying, 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 you have a bunch of clothes in your closet with labels, some people when they fluctuate with their weights also can have different um, collection of clothing because they don't know which weights they will be at any given time so they have different sizes of clothing in their closet um but clothing can also be another way like old toys for kids old clothing for kids that has just collected over time in the garage in their closets and then it's been years your child might be a teenager now you still have clothing for them in your house when they were like one years old or a baby or whatever and you have it so people are good about being myself being trying to be good about getting containers, organizing, labeling. So is there if ready for donation? I'll, I'll talk about that. But donating could be a good way to service other people who might need those clothing. So I wanted to hint on that too, like clothing, cluttered, shoes, broken bikes, broken toys, can't be a clutter and collection all over your house where you have no space to sit. Some people even don't have space on their couch to sit because it's so cluttered. Some people even have like plastic bag wrapped all over their couch. That's a sign of trauma, you know? So collection, minimalist type of mentality also can be, you know, people have boxes and boxes of shoes. Just, you don't even go up to the top of your closet to see what shoes are. I have some people even like they have collections of things on top of their refrigerator. Top, 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 top on top of the refrigerator. Sometimes, somehow in my culture, I know a lot of people who pile things like cereal and stuff on top of their refrigerator for some reason. Still trying to find the research why people do that. But I don't know. I was people do that. But then it becomes like a collection on top of the refrigerator and might be expired, flat cereal and it's there but anyway I won't dive it. just give me an example um so gives you less energy when you have all that clutter around it makes you have ADHD presentation um can't find things frustration dysregulation how do you deal with clutter like that when it's a sign of trauma not just one, it's a sign. It could be a majority of time is a sign of trauma, especially in very extreme cases like that, like the ones I described. It's planning. Simple answer is planning. So when you come to the realization, planning to, hey, is the anxiety, is the depression, what it, look for help. Call, you know, a therapist, a friend, trusted friend, a safe person. Say, hey, listen, I have all this stuff. I want to donate it, but I have the time. I tr think of it, but I don't ever try to carry through weeks, months, years after. So planning, the first step is just planning. Plan it, put it on your calendar. A week from today, I'm going to donate two items. You put in your car, whatever mode of transportation you use, 
go and donate it to a goodwill salvation army. They will take it to take it to a shelter. They will be so grateful to get those items. So the first and the only answer that I have for all this trauma, besides treating the symptomology of the trauma, including anxiety, depression, lack of sleep, rumination, all those things. First step is just to plan. Plan to clean small areas at a time so it doesn't seem overwhelming. Plan, put it on your calendar. That's the first step. Take one little EDBD step at a time to attacking the problem. Rally some good friends, seek help to get it done. Because otherwise you're going to live a lifetime of that mentality. And it's so pretty. And you might end up on order some TLC. Anyway, today that's my video. Share, comment. If you know anyone who's looking for help for clutter, whether it's their friendships, clutter in their environment, home office, home office, work office, wherever, their cars, dirty, home, outside environment. And so it's planet and seek help because there's help out there. Catch you on my next video.